All righty. We're going to go ahead and get started, guys. Um, first off, welcome to the session, uh, Prevention Access Campaigns, U equals U, and Ending the Epidemic. Uh, going to take you through a portion of our, 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 our show, our slides, uh, the run of show and things, and you guys are going to get a chance to look at our agenda as well. So next slide, please, Kim. So first, we'll start off with a few introductions from myself and my colleague, who is also here. Um, and then we'll go over an overview of U equals U in the science. And we'll also help you all learn how to communicate effectively um, our, our, our U equals U strategies and how we share these with policymakers, which you all will have the chance to do this week. And also have the U equals U public health strategy to reach 400,000 people not virally suppressed is critical to the work that we're doing. And also explain what we mean by that as well, followed by a quick Q&A and discussion at the end of each portion of this. Um, next slide, please, Ken. My name is DeAndre Moore. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I am the partnership, US Partnerships and Community Engagement Manager at the Prevention Access Campaign. And now I'm gonna turn it over to my esteemed colleague to introduce herself. Dee? Hi everybody, I'm Davina Connor. My pronouns are she, her, hers. I am Prevention Access's Community Engagement Outreach Specialist. And we are glad to be here. Go ahead, Cam, to the next slide. Just quick, quick tip guys, housekeeping rules. Remember to keep all of your questions inside of the chat box, keep your uh, computers on mute and just put all those questions that you might have in the chat box and continue to monitor that as well. All right, so U equals U. Undetectable equals untransmittable. What does that mean? People living with HIV who are in treatment and have an undetectable viral load cannot transmit HIV to their sexual partner. And that's under 200 copies. Next slide, Kim. So U equals U prevention access is global. And we have over a thousand partners and over a hundred organizations that have signed on. Next slide. So Dr. Fauci states U equals U is the foundation of being able to end the epidemic. Let's play this uh, video. So you talked a little bit about treatment and using it as prevention or U equals U as a lot of people know the phenomenon. Is that one of the tools that you'll be using rolling out? U equals U is the, is, is, the, is the hallmark of what we're doing because if you can get the infection level, the viral load in any given individual to below detectable, that person will not transmit infection. That means U equals U. So if we accomplish U equals U, if you think for a moment, what does that mean? That means we don't have anybody that's transmitting infection. So that's what I mean when I say that concept of U equals U is the foundation of being able to end the epic. Okay, so why is U equals U a game changer? So it transforms sexual, social and reproductive lives of people who live with HIV. It also dismantles HIV stigma on the individual. And we all know that many people who live with HIV struggle with internal stigma. So it dismantles HIV on community, clinical and public policy levels. Treatment goals. It reduces anxiety associated with HIV testing and adds an incentive to start and stay on treatment and care, which is happening now because of U equals U. The universal access, it provides a strong public health rationale to increase access and eliminate barriers to treatment and care and diagnostics, which is the third U, which equals universal. Next slide. So how do we know U equals U? Well, we know there are four major studies that were conducted, and I'm going to talk about two. The first one is the partner study, and this was done from 2010 to 2014 among gay and heterosexual couples. And then partner two study was done only in gay men. And the results from these studies linked to zero transmission of HIV. Now, with, within all four studies, there were 125,000 sex acts, and that's a lot of sex. 
And the takeaway from these studies, again, is zero transmission. And this is the foundation of U equals U. Next slide. So we'll talk a little bit about uh, the global allies. And so the World Health Organization, they talk about people who have achieved and maintained an undetectable viral load cannot transmit HIV sexual to their sexual partners. Next slide. And then we have PEPFAR as a global ally. And they say they're using U equals U education in a minimum program requirement of all PEPFAR countries. Next slide, please. Now we have the CDC global. And they, they state once your viral load is undetectable, you cannot give HIV to people who have sex. Next slide, please. Now in the US, we're gonna talk about the US federal health achievement. So in 2017, the CDC did confirm effectively no risk, but that was kind of confusing for people. So they came back in 2017 and stated and indicated that U equals U is 100% effective, 100%. Now in 2019, this was a very important, this was very important because this year, th within this year of 2019, because it was when the CDC authorized message flexibility to include U equals U in the U.S. integrated, sorry, included U equals U and the U.S. integrated U equals U into their official treatment guidelines. And they encouraged clinicians to inform their patients about U equals U in 2019. Next slide, please. So we have non-sexual transmission, which would be breastfeeding. So U equals U does not apply to breastfeeding, but the risk is extremely low. And recommendations vary based on region availability of healthy options. And then we talk about needle sharing. Although there is currently no conclusive research established to, uh, to that and U equals U applies to needle sharing, it is likely that the risk is extremely low to non-existent. Next slide. Now the U equals U guidelines would be treatment. We all need treatment to save our lives. Labs, which we all know we have to get our labs done, which is three, six months. And then, excuse me, and then we have care. So we need treatment, labs, and care to save our lives. Next slide, please. So under 200 copies is what we must know. And U equals U is only about sex. It's not about breastfeeding or injection drug use. U equals U is about HIV. So you may want to consider using condoms because of other STIs and unwanted pregnancies. Remember that. Next slide, please. So common science questions. Do people say, do people stay undetectable? Adherence, adherence is key, everyone, it's key. Um, the partner study tested at six and 12 months and there were no transmissions, zero transmissions. This is a variety of guidance, but it is clear from the partner study, 12 months is sufficient. Remember that it's sufficient. And viral suppression was durable between these tests. And now DeAndre is going to communicate. U equals U. Thank you, Dee. Um, welcome back. I mean, hello again, everyone. Uh, just a few housekeeping things to consider and keep going forward. Remember to use the chat box if you guys have any questions as we go. You can put your questions in the chat box. And also be on the lookout for a link from Murray Pinner. It's going to have a link to a document that you guys are giving a privilege to access. It's going to include some sample tweets that you guys can share and some information on how to communicate U equals U with your policymakers also. Um, and also just a special thank you to Age United for having the session and having us on here. So to jump in, communicating U equals U effectively. So there are four C's that we abide by when communicating U equals U in any aspect, whether it's with your peers, your community, or with policymakers. And that's to remain clear, confident, consistent, 
and be conscious of what you're saying when you're using the language surrounded around you equals you. So let's jump into the first C, clear. When we're talking about being clear, you have to understand that it's very imperative and that language matters. So the words that we say uh, do uh, or make all the difference when leaving room about for, for doubt and so forth. And so by being clear, you wanna use language like you can't pass it on, you can't transmit, prevents HIV, it's impossible, it's zero risk and 100% effective. And we, you should feel very confident in saying these things because one, we have the science to prove it and we have some of the most notable and respectable healthcare professionals in the world who have said these things, like Dr. Fauci. You don't wanna say things like negligible, extremely unlikely, helps prevent virtually impossible or close to zero because these things are inaccurate and they're not true. However, saying things that are factual, like can't pass it on 100% effective and so forth are true. And you have the science again to back it up. Next slide, please. Again, you have notable um, resources and, 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 and folks in this field who have said these things like Dr. Fauci, when he said the risk is zero. He also said that it's impossible for a person to transmit. We've also seen Dr. Allison Rogers, the, 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 the lead author of the Partner One and Two study say that the risk is zero. And it's very, very clear that the risk is zero. We also have her on video saying that as well. The British HIV Association has also put out in publications that there is no risk. And again, that the risk, that there's zero risk of sexual transmission of HIV. So you wanna avoid terms like negligible risk. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the CDC has also stated that it's 100% effective. So there's any doubt or there was any doubt in your mind before about how to communicate or which language to use, these are the things that you wanna say. Do not leave room for error. Do not leave room for folks to come back and combat it because you can't combat the science. It's there and it's proven and we have the, the material to show so. Next slide, please. Again, you wanna remain confident. If nothing else is gonna make you feel confident, know that you have folks like Dr. Dr. Anthony Fauci, Dr. Rogers, and you have us with the science behind it that can make you feel even more confident. You don't say things like, I believe you because you but use a condom and or PrEP just in case. You do wanna say things such as, condoms or PrEP aren't clinically necessary to prevent HIV with you equals you. Now, for safekeeping, if you wanna consider using condoms or PrEP to prevent other things such as STDs or pregnancy, or if a partner who is living with HIV is struggling with their adherence, or if you're having sex with other sexual partners who you and you have not had that conversation about their status or about whether or not they're adhering to their medications and have an undetectable viral load, or for just an added emotional feeling of security and agency. Those are reasons to say that, you know, you want to use condoms and PrEP and so forth. Don't say things like you're only as good as your last viral load test. And I'm going to stop there because I used to hear this so much and I've coined a new term from someone else who started saying it. So I can't take credit for it, but there's a term. It's, it's, it's when people say you're only as good as your last viral load test. Well, if my last viral load test said that I was undetectable, then you're right. I am still undetectable. So that's valid in some, some aspect, but also know that yeah, that's what they're going to use. And if your last viral load test was undetectable, you're most likely still undetectable. You do want to say that if you're taking your medication that's prescribed and having regular viral load tests, you have no need to worry. So as long as you're adhering to your medications and as long as people living with HIV in general are adhering to their medications and that last viral load test said that they were undetectable, I can guarantee you, you're still undetectable. Next slide, please. Don't say you never know because we do in fact know and we have the science again to prove it and back us up. Staying consistent. And this is a part that can be hard for some people because change is uncomfortable, right? A lot of folks who are here and some of us who have been inside of this field or some of who identify as long-term survivors and so forth, this is still roughly kind of new for everyone, right? So when you're talking about you equals you and when it first came about, it was, it was the change I believe that made so many people who were resistant, resistant to it because we had old ways of thinking. We have become so programmed to just say things such as you know treatment as prevention, which is what you equals you is, is alluding to as well. But when we start talk, thinking about new ways of thinking and how we can change this, there's a level of discomfort that, that comes about. And so in order for us to move forward past this, we have to stay consistent with the messaging, stay on brand and continue expressing the science behind it. When we're talking about you equals you, it's about the science, something that no one can combat. It's there, it's proven, and we have the facts to go forward with it. And it's up to us to share with our community and the people that we really care about, which are people living with HIV. It must be repeatedly heard from the right messengers and credible sources. We have the credible sources. 
you guys who are listening today are also the credible sources. And after today, you're going to be the right messengers as well. You also want to use targeted channels, including social media, outreach activities, patient information, clinical waiting room settings, newsletters, treatment guidelines, and so forth. Speaking of, do not forget to refer back to that chat. There's going to be a link in there that has some tools that you all can use for social media. So you can start today, actually right now, using social media channels to talk about U equals U and communicate it effectively and correctly. You also want to make U equals U central to speeches like AIDS walks and other public events such as AIDS watch. I think we heard it earlier today or yesterday. Um, folks who were speaking talked about U equals U in their messaging. You guys are going to have a public event coming up to speak to members on the Hill, your congressional members, your, your representatives. That's another opportunity to, to make U equals U central in those briefings. Remember to talk about U equals U in your policy briefings and try to find a way to, to make it coincide and fit in there because there's more than one way that you can do that. And we'll get to that as well. You also want to have a conversation with those who are living with or vulnerable to HIV at every opportunity. But I'm going to challenge you to go beyond that. Not just folks who are living with or vulnerable to HIV, but everyone possible. Because when we start having conversations around U equals U, what the science has also showed is that, and our research has showed, is that it decreases the stigma around HIV as well when folks get new knowledge around how far we've come since the beginning of this epidemic. Next slide, please. Kim. So you don't want to hide U equals U in the back of page five and so forth. You want to make U equals U front and center because if we're talking about HIV, then we're talking about those people who live with HIV. And people living with HIV should be on the forefront of the lines of what we care about. It's great. Don't get me wrong to talk about PrEP and condoms. Those things are great. But when you really care about people who are living with HIV, you put the information that saves lives to the forefront of this. And U equals U is part of that information that's going to continue saving lives and shaping lives too. Make it seem... U equals U is still new, and the only way it, it the only way it will change lives is if we continue to share it again and again and again. Next slide, please. Being conscious. So this is something else that we've adopted here at Prevention Access Campaign. It's V does not equal V, and we've been using this for years. And so it means viral load does not equal value. Now I know some people might get a little confused. You know, you, you talk about how much we we push U equals U and being undetectable. But there's a conscious part in all of us here that we recognize that some of us have a level of privilege. We realize that not every person here or in, in the US will be able to reach undetectable status, some biological and some because of structural, social, emotional barriers and just the norms of oppression that have been put in place to stop people from getting on treatment as fast as they can. And it, it, it makes it harder for them to adhere to their medications. So that's why we, we, we recognize the fact, and it's important to let people, let, let folks know that their viral load does not equal their value. We care about everybody and we tend to try our best to continue leading with love. Um, but it's also imperative to know that no one with HIV is a danger and that all people with HIV have options for safer sex, such as condoms, and in some parts of the world, prep. Next slide, please. Remember that treatment is a personal health decision, not a public health responsibility. However, we've, we're learning and we're adapting to using the public health strategy of U equals U to increase access and remove barriers to information, treatment and care, so people with HIV can stay healthy and be free from worry and about transmission. So with this public health strategy, which we'll dive into next in just a second, you have to be conscious and remember that although those folks that we're talking about who have not been able to reach undetectable viral load, majority of them within that 400,000, and when I say 400,000, I'm talking about the 400,000 people in the US that's, that, it, that it's estimated who have not been able to reach undetectable viral loads because of certain reasons. Most of them are because of what I talked about, systems of oppression, um, um, the lack of quality healthcare, the lack of resources and so forth. And so we have to use this strategy to advocate for more resources. Next slide, Cam, please. And that's, this is going to show you exactly why we need more resources. Because when we increase access and remove barriers to treatment, care, and diagnostics, and we provide more resources to folks, it moves us on to the next phase of this, which improves the well being of people living with HIV. This is the most critical part of all of this. If we can improve the well being of people living with HIV by helping them to reach undetectable status, then we prevent new HIV transmissions, period. And that's going to take us to ending the epidemic. Dr. Fauci said it best, it's the foundation of ending the epidemic. So if we can get here and we can provide more resources and folks can have access to better housing, food, um, jobs, transportation, and so forth, 
then the, that's well, those are less worries than now they can focus on becoming the best version of themselves as they can and adhere to their medications and so forth, which again, is gonna help us in the epidemic. Next slide, Kim. The CDC put out a study to back all of this information again. They said that US HIV diagnosis could drop by 94% by 2030 if treatment is prioritized. So if you belong to an organization or anybody out there that's listening, your organization has primarily been focused on PrEP and pushing PrEP and condoms and so forth, it might be time to consider, reconsider what's going to be prioritized within that, th that organization, that well or machine. Because the CDC is saying it, and NIH, Dr. Fauci, and so many other healthcare professionals who we deem to be notable and respectable in this field are telling us that we could literally end this epidemic by prioritizing people living with HIV first and ensuring that U equals U is being distributed to them um, and the education is being provided, then we can literally drop 94% of new HIV infections by 2030. And that's tangible and we can do it. And you have the resources. Let's keep it going. Treatment goals. So there's a study that was put out um, that shows us that when people were informed by their healthcare professionals, treatment satisfaction went up, optimal adherence went up, self-reported virological control went up, optimal overall health, mental health, sexual health, everything went up and increased by those who were informed over those who were not informed. The study shows us that people who had a conversation with their, U equals, with their providers about U equals U were two times more likely to report viral suppression. Again, we have the tools, the science, and the research to back all of this up. And so if you needed any access to any of this information, you can probably find it in that link that's located in the chat right now. If you guys click the chat again, you're gonna see a link that's gonna provide you with all this information and take you a little bit deeper and, and help you um, to learn how to communicate this effectively with policymakers on the Hill this week. Next slide, Cam. D? You're muted, D. I'm gonna turn it back over to D. One second, guys. The Lancet. The Lancet has a, a U equals U call to, am, to action. Now, Lancet is the number two medical journal in the world. And they have four recommendations for U equals U, or two U equals U. The first one is healthcare professionals need to inform patients living with HIV um, and affected by HIV about U equals U to improve foremost and first personal health and well-being as a public health, as a pub, as public health. And sharing this information will, they say might, I say will greatly improve um, the social and emotional well being of people who live with HIV. Next slide, please. The second one is providers. Advocate for use of the concept of undetectable equals untransmittable in messaging and supporting all patients to remain virally suppressed. Next slide. Advocates should be equipped, equipped to use the so-called public health argument from a U equals, U equals U advocacy. And this is gonna increase access and remove barriers to quality in healthcare. So you can use this strategy when, when conveying these messages, talking to your legislator, you know? You can use uh, the U equals U uh, strategy. Next slide, please. And the last one is a national culturally competent effort is needed to raise awareness about U equals U. And we can use this again in our advocacy when talking to our legislators. Next slide, please. So now we're gonna pause for, for questions about science and uh, communication for a little bit. So if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat if you haven't already done that. We're just checking. Are 
And also while we're waiting, I'm going to also put, put my email address in the chat, guys. So if you have an organization or belong to an organization and want some more information from us or ways in which we can talk about this, we will definitely um, ensure that we include that. <clears throat> Dee, there's a question. It says, can you talk about how you equals you improves the lives of people with HIV? Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it improves the lives of people with HIV. It, 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 it takes away that internal stigma that so many of us live with for so long. Um, it, 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 gets, it gets a lot of people who were out of care back into care once they hear the message of U equals U. They want to stay in care. They want to stay on their meds. They want to eventually become virally suppressed. Although we know not everyone can get to virally suppressed, eventually there are so many people that can get there. So it's changing and improving the lives of people living with HIV, and we're living longer and healthy lives. And just knowing about U equals U, we're, we're knowing that we can be in long, loving, healthy relationships now without fear of transmitting HIV to our partners. Correct. Correct. I saw we had a note from Kelly uh, Gluckman, uh, I believe is in LA, uh, I've uh, worked with before, and she said that um, it's revolutionized their dating life, which is, I agree, Kelly, me too. It's, it's been the same for me as well. Um, I have a question from LS that says, what would you say to an HIV provider who dispels the if efficacy of U equals U on the claims that people can just take their meds a few weeks before labs and not truly guaranteed to be undetectable? Um, <clears throat> LS, we've seen that before, and I've heard that term, that 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 scenario used before. Um, the, the issue with that is, is that if a person is able to go in and get lab work done and they've started their, their treatment and it shows up that they're undetectable, well, that person is undetectable. You can't trick labs, you can't trick science. And so if that's what we're seeing, then I 100% I, I would say that that person is undetectable. But we also have to have change the narrative that people living with HIV lie. Like we're not all liars. I don't want us to have that kind of thought process or anything like that because um, people living with HIV, we're honest people. And regardless of what one or two may do um, in their personal life, that's not one, our business. And we have no control over that. Um, so it's, I always advocate for <clears throat> ensuring that we're doing the best that we can do, that I can do uh, to help those who I'm around um, and that I'm involved with. Uh, thanks for all the great words, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that. Any suggestions for how to change wording from Dr. Fauci signed CDC when speaking with Republican legislators who will automatically discount anything after those words. Um, hmm. Science, one thing that I've learned with talking with policymakers is one, they can't argue with science and also the public health strategy of also saving money for them, right? And so if we have folks who are newly diagnosed on treatment, they're gonna have to get treated anyways, right? So if we get them to prioritize them to be on treatment and we prevent new transmissions, then we start preventing newly diagnosed patients who have to then take up more dollars from them. Now, I'm not gonna get into like Republican Democrat because I don't, you know, I don't know, it doesn't matter who's all on here, but people like to save dollars. Legislators, regardless of their um, their ties to political parties, believe in saving dollars and using that money elsewhere. So we prioritize people living with HIV again to be on the forefront and get the resources that they need then we lower the transmission rate by 94% by 2030. And I believe it's possible. And that's what it's gonna be. Yep, Marcus said it best. Frame it as a money situation with conservative representatives. That's correct, I agree. Yeah, I like how you put that. Yeah, and so just before we jump back into the next portion of this, which is gonna be fairly fast, about 15 minutes, um, continue looking at the chat. You guys will see a link from Murray. That link is going to take you to a document that will have social media uh, tools and samples. And also it's going to have you tools on how to, it, it explicitly say, states how to communicate U equals U with your legislators and with policymakers all over. And it's something that you guys get to keep. It's on the house. It's on us. So be sure to utilize that and save it to your, to your computers, please, 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 please. And if you haven't seen it already, it's also on the AIDS United's Twitter um, and also on our Twitter as well. So be sure to follow both AIDS United and um, Prevention Access on Twitter for any more updates. So jumping back in really quickly to talk about U equals U with policymakers. You wanna emphasize, as I just said, the public health benefits of increasing treatment, access and uptake. Again, when we emphasize the, the, the public health benefits of it, what we're talking about is 
prioritizing people living with HIV so that they can reach undetectable status so that we prevent new HIV transmissions. PrEP, condoms, all of those things are great, but there's only one me prevent prevention mechanism that has been proven to be 100% effective with preventing HIV, and that's treatment. That's undetectable. That's folks getting to an undetectable viral load status to be 100% effective to not transmitting HIV sexually. Share stories about the personal impact of U equals U in your life. Um, I believe there was a storytelling workshop, and so many of you on here have, 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 have developed ways and, and new skills to share stories and your personal stories. That's how you get folks to buy into whatever it is you're talking about, especially those on the Hill. They might not care so much about the science, but when you can sit, they don't wanna see you looking at the paperwork and so forth. Tell it from the heart, make them feel what you've been through or how these things have affected and changed your life. And just figure out a way to incorporate you equals you in there. If you're a person who's been diagnosed for a period amount of time and you equals you, as Kelly said, has like completely shaped their dating life, Make that the forefront of your conversation. Let folks know about this and draft it. Weave it in there with your policy agendas and so forth. Show your language. Pull at, pull at the heartstrings. Yeah, yeah, you have to. That's, that's, you have to. That's, that's what politicians do. That's how politicians get their votes out. They tell stories. They connect with people. And so you want to give it back to them and connect with them as well. You want to share language, resources, and tweets. Again, that document that Murray just put back inside the chat has all of this information that can help you share the language. It has resources and the tweets for you to go ahead and copy and paste. Next slide, please. Ah. Speaking of tweets, here's one of the sample tweets that you guys can also find in that document that's in the chat that you can click and save. 400,000 people with HIV in the U.S. aren't virally suppressed. Hashtag U equals you. Is an effective way to reach people living with HIV who are not in care and encourage treatment adherence. And when people with living, living with HIV are undetectable, they stay healthy and don't transmit HIV through sex. This tweet right here, I think is, it, I, I know it's in the document, but I wanna reiterate how important it is to share this with policymakers. This is enough right here because you're talking about prevention. You're talking about prioritizing people living with HIV, which is me, it's us. And it's, 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 it's putting you equals you in the center of all of this to ensure that we're getting folks the resources that, that, that they need. And so also whenever you guys are tweeting out, remember to use the hashtag AIDS watch and hashtag U equals you. You have to spell it out as it is showing on your screen. Next slide, please. Another couple of good tweets. In order to end the HIV epidemic, as Dr. Fauci has said, invest in the health of people with HIV. When people with HIV have the treatment and care to stay healthy, this also stops new transmission. Hashtag AIDS Watch is the perfect time to ensure the U equals U message reaches policymakers. We must also increase access to HIV treatment. This hashtag AIDS Watch, we commit to using hashtag U equals U as a rallying cry to get everyone the treatment and care they need and deserve. This is necessary to improve the well being of people with HIV, prevent new HIV transmission, and in the epidemic. And just to add in there, it's not in there right now, but also when you conveying this to your policymakers, it's not just about the well-being, it's also advocating for those resources. You, those resources are going to be the main thing to help us to get to that 400,000 folks who have maybe fallen out of care or not been able to reach um, adherence or get into care at all yet. Next slide, please. I'm going to turn it over to Dita. Okay, so you here. equals you on social media. Use the hashtag you equals you. Share often and consistently using accurate and clear language and contact prevention access for any sample copies or information. And remember, sample tweets in the chat. They're in the chat. You can get them in the chat once again. And please do not forget to tag AIDS United in your, in your tweets. Next slide. All right, we're open yeah. for questions and discussions. Yes, again, my name is DeAndre. Um, I've been here with my esteemed colleague, D, Davina Connor. And Cameron has also been on, has been the person who has been helping us click through these slides. It's amazing and put all this together for us. So special thanks to Cam, um, Cam. and AIDS United, who's here as well. Um, this has all of our emails on here. So if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to email either of us and we'll channel them to the necessary persons if possible. Um, but if any of you have any questions or want to say anything at this time, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the permission to open it up and see if there's anything that you all have to say. 
again, don't forget to use that, that, that link on there and, and visit that document and get all the resources that you might need. Yeah, I'd like to make a, a quick comment. And um, so I've been HIV positive for about 18 years. Mm -hmm. And um, when I got married, my, um, my wife knew that I was positive, but this is back when, you know, there was condoms all the time and that was the messaging. And we were part of a support group where most, in most cases, one person was positive and the other was negative. Mm -hmm. You know, we called it a sero discordant sure. mm -hmm. uh, group. And, you know, so my doctor pulled me aside. This is about 2012. And he said, you know, I went to the eight USAID conference. I don't know, it was in France or something. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know what? Since you've been undetectable for so long, you can't transmit disease. And I tried to have this conversation with her but all of the voices of the negative mm -hmm. women was condoms, condoms, mm -hmm. condoms, condoms. Mm -hmm. And she died from breast cancer in 2015. Oh, wow. And then I went, to, oh, I went to US Conference on Age in 2016 and I learned about U equals U and I cried like a baby. Oh, all wow. that time lost, you know, cause it, wow. we had it that if wow. we had sex, not only was I gonna infect her, I was gonna kill her. You know, so anyway, it, I'm just so glad that this languaging is here. Um, I have a new fiance and she's cool. <laughs> she understands. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So I'm just telling you that this has made a difference in my life personally. That story, Barry, is a story that you need to share on the Hill tomorrow because I am over here like literally fighting back yeah. tears. Like the way you see, mm, damn it. Yes, that's a story that we need to hear. Those kind of stories are the ones that are changing lives. Um, and it's so disheartening that, you know, this information is information that should have been shared far and wide long ago. Um, I hate that we didn't have it then. We didn't have the tools or the right. studies then, but we do now. And information and stories like stories like that are reasons why we had to hold providers feet to the fire. Because had there been a provider there in that room all those years ago, Barry, I do believe the situations would have been very different. Um, with your former wife, you know, rest her soul. Um, and, but I'm very excited to know that this has shaped your life in such a way. I think that's amazing. Thank you for sharing, Barry. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for sharing well, that. Well, I, I, I don't... Show people how liberating, how liberating yeah. this message is for people who live with HIV. Yeah, that's it, really it, great. It's changing our lives. It's really changing so many lives once they hear this message. Because um, many of us fought for so long and, and felt so uncomfortable with ourselves and who we are. And then when we hear this message, we're like, well, how come we weren't told this long ago when, when, they, when they've known this, you know? So mm -hmm. just continue to keep talking about it with, with right. people who are negative and then sharing it with individuals who are HIV positive as well. But again, sharing this with your, with your legislators is, is gonna help change things a great deal. Sam, we, uh, Steve, Steve had a question. I'm going to go oh, to you all. Hey, I see who has their hey. yeah, I see, I see some of the folks have their hands raised. We're going to get to you guys too. Sam Chandler, I see you asked about pamphlets. If you can email um, from one of one of the email addresses, I'll put mine back in the chat. Um, I can see what resources we have, and we can try to help get you some out there too. Um, but go ahead, Steve. I'm sorry. And oh, then, uh, Craig hey, and Sean, I have you. I guess I'd like to add on because uh, it is a personal story for me too. Uh, you know, I, I was married. Uh, the, the 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 fear in my wife uh, with a the, the bathroom a toothbrush uh, maybe the the razor you know I felt like I'm a, I could kill my family to uh, you, you know just living with that the, the depression that came with that and uh, just the the feeling of disgust is horrible and then as uh, someone just said that liberating feeling of being undetectable and knowing you're not is huge uh can't emphasize that enough i mean how huge that is and what a good feeling and i would think uh anybody now diagnosed with the medicines the way they are you would run to that that that's you know such a goal and such a beautiful thing to you know come out of this uh situation so it's 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 huge Right. I'm going to go ahead. I'm, I saw you guys had your, thank you for sharing that, Steve. That, that means a lot. And, and those personal testimonies, again, are what's going to help shape the policymakers' agendas and lives. Um, Craig, I saw your hand up and then I got you, Sean, and I see Carla and, and, and Miss Margaret. Uh, Craig, go ahead. 
Yeah, um, I work in an HIV clinic and I'm actually um, peer support. And um, we see a lot of the young, younger ones coming in. Um, our population, I think it's probably, it's a small population, about 200 patients. Um, but I think it's reflective of what we're seeing in the country right now. We've got a lot of um, longtime survivors and then this big gap in the middle. Mm -hmm. And now we've got these 20 something year olds that are coming into the clinic and like we've had a couple of new cases and we haven't had any in a while. So I, you know, when I go in and I find out that one of our patients is non-adherent, I want to first of all, strangle them, um, <laughs> you know, because it's kind of like, what are you doing? You know, and I finally just get a heart to heart with them. And I say, you know what it's like to live with HIV and a stigma that's attached to it and everything else. Why on earth would you put somebody else's life in danger when you don't have to? And I asked, I mean, I hit between right between the eyes and they look at me and they're like, I never thought of it that way. I'm like, right. So I said, not only are you saving your own life, which is the primary reason for you taking your meds. I said, but I know you're promiscuous. I said, you know, you've been in here a few times over the past year with an STI, <laughs> you know? So I said, why not take your meds so that at least you're not gonna infect your partner with HIV and then they have to experience what you're going through. And they're like, wow. And what's nice with uh, positive that on their next appointment, um, they're, they're actually, they're actually non-detectable. They're undetectable. They listen. That's so, right. That's you know, I mean, you've got to get the message out there though and make it relatable. I think, I think, I think, I think sometimes you got to have those hard conversations and give them some of that tough love too. And I think that's okay. I'm, I'm 20 something. And so I think that uh, I, I could kind of resonate with uh, uh, the, those, having those conversations from those who have been doing this for a little bit longer. Um, yeah. I do also think that we have to have a little space and leave a little room for those who have not been able to reach undetectable status because of the lack of resources. We have to remember. Oh, absolutely. People, yeah. Some people, it's not the fact that they don't want to, it's like, how the hell can I worry about medication? And I ain't got nowhere to sleep tonight. That's the first thing. So, right. um, yeah, So, but, but, but I appreciate that. And I appreciate your sentiments yeah. too. That's great. I have several patients that are, um, you know, that don't have um, stable housing or to have no housing at all. And I tell them, if you're in the neighborhood, you know, if you think you could get here on a regular basis, we'll, we'll hold on to your meds for you and make sure you've got clean water to take your meds. Because yep. I do have, where, where we're located, you know, I've got about a dozen that are having a hard time staying at here and they're all within walking distance of our clinic. So I've offered that up to, I, I try to be creative, but you know, I am very sensitive to, you know, why they're not adherent, you know, and, and pick and choose, you know. Right. Correct. So Correct. thanks. No problem, no problem. Um, let's see here, I think Sean was up next and then I got Miss Carla and then I have Margaret too, Sean. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, um, I just wanted to say, uh, as far as U equals U, um, I was born positive in 1989, and uh, growing up in the healthcare uh, stuff, you know, you, I would overhear doctors, you know, occasionally say things like two, three years, stuff like that, you know, just guesstimating, like, you know, when my expiration date was, and uh, wow. so they didn't really, like, plan to have you know the puberty talk and relationship talk and you know I, I remember before I heard the message back then my first girlfriend like uh, I got super depressed when we broke up and we we broke up because I didn't disclose to her um, we weren't promiscuous or anything but um, or hooking up <laughs> I'm sorry I'm choking up but uh, You're okay I didn't understand that. And, uh, I attempted suicide by mm. just stopping taking my medicine. It took about eight years to catch up. And, uh, I ended up with an AIDS diagnosis and a T cell count of six. And it was there in the hospital bed that the doctor told me that, you know, I could, I could just hang out and die. Oh. He would like hook me up or there's this thing called U equals U. And I could start taking medicine and I could live uh, a whole, a full life. And up until that point, I had just been told a couple years, a couple years, you know, like that really changed my life. You know, unfortunately, like I, I, 
I had a bet with alcoholism. I was still coming to terms with being positive itself. And it wasn't until I, I got into uh, a good support group in Nashville that uh, I ended up in AA after that. I'm 16 months sober now. And uh, I've been employed by Nashville Cares, which is the, uh, the HIV AIDS organization there in Nashville that um, I, I ended up hooking up with. And uh, yeah, if it wasn't for the message of you equals you, I definitely would not be here now. Um, so oh my yeah, like I, I am here oh for that, 100 percent for that. Thank you for sharing, Sean. Thank you. So yeah, much. Sean, that that's amazing. Like, you guys are like literally up here making me tear up. So please, like <laughs> this same story. Oh my gosh, I wish that these legislators were already on the phone. Like if those of you who Man. are listening, like I don't whatever organization you belong to, you can see firsthand that people living with HIV are telling you how this how this has changed their lives, and like they decided to live because of this. And so I think it's very imperative that we continue sharing this message. So Sean, thank you so much. Just wanna uh, reiterate something that I saw in the chat about language. Language does matter, right? Um, and so we say things like, oh, you're being promiscuous. Let's kind of shy away from that because if that's the case, I'm very promiscuous. Like I have great <laughs> sex. Like I don't like, I don't wanna hear it. I have some, I have sex and that's okay. And those are my experiences and my personal experiences. They shouldn't matter to anyone else. And we want to make sure that people are protecting themselves and our loved ones. And I think there's ways in which we can communicate that um, to folks without uh, stigmatizing them and so forth. And so again, thank you to Sean and Craig so far. Ms. Carla, I saw your hand up. Um, would you like to go ahead and share with us? Yes, hi, DeAndre. And hi, hey. Davina. Um, hey. Thank you all for what you all doing. And thank you for the comments. This is my first time at AIDS Watch. Um, uh, I have, I, I'm HIV positive, have been for almost 26 years. I have, I work, I'm an advocate. I work at an AIDS service organization in Massachusetts, AIDS Project Worcester. Um, my question is, and I have sworn by you equals you for years. However, my thing is I've had a session with a client recently where the client reported to me that her partner stated what she was undetectable, but her partner informed her that he became positive from her. She believes it and maybe she's being used as a scapegoat. So I want to know how do I go back and tell her or just continue to convey to her this information. And I, I'm just, you know, I'm just perplexed right now because <laughs> I'm listening to the facts. I know the facts and trying to just share them with someone who's now doubting the facts. And thank you, Sean, because you are a miracle for sharing your story. So that's what a, I want to say. There was a situation like this with me, Carla, but uh, the, the, they were, neither, the, the person who was living with HIV was not open with their status and they communicated with me off and on through Facebook Messenger for almost a year. And uh, they finally contacted me one day and told me that their partner had contracted HIV. And I had to have an honest conversation with them and had them call me and instead of being um, chatting through Messenger. And I, I had to be honest and tell them that maybe your partner cheated on you. Um, I'm just being honest. and. Come to find out four months later, I get a phone call and <laughs> their partner did cheat on them. And that's how their partner contracted HIV. They just tried to make that person feel guilty saying that they did it, but the partner was cheating. Um, so that- that's that, that that's it. That's yeah. it. Even even in the study, what we found out when we did the science portion of this was that with those folks who were who, all the sex acts and so forth, when there were new diagnosed patients within the, the U equals U study and everything, those partners who did become newly diagnosed were having sexual encounters with other people with other who people. weren't a part of the study and who were not adherent to their medication. Yeah. So you can go back, Carla, and tell, tell your client that you, 100% that he didn't get it. If, if she has been adhering to her medication and it's been undetectable, it didn't come from her. No, no, no. way, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. it didn't. Sorry to break a heart, but... Tuition knows best, and tuition probably was already telling that person that they, what they already knew. They just wanted you to confirm it. And so you can confirm it didn't come from them. Now, we don't know where else, but it didn't come from them. No. <laughs> so, bravo. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I hope and I, and I hope that makes you feel confident going back, Carla. Um, thank you so much, though, for your question. And, and that, that was great. Um, we have about 10 more minutes left. So I'm going to turn back over to Miss Margaret, I believe. Uh, you had a question for us. So it's on you. Well, basically, I have a, a comment, really. Um, okay. so I got diagnosed in November, in November of uh, 1990. So I've lived with this virus for 31 years. Wow. But they were all good years, okay? Mm -hmm. And I found out I got it from you know, using dirty needles. Mm -hmm. So that was my first education about it. But um, and then, but the only thing was, there was no medication I said at that time. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm saying I said it was that AZT, and that was for cancer patients. <laughs> so, and they said that didn't help my addiction any because I put well, I got five years to live. I might just go out with a bang. Yeah. And so, but after a while, I got tired. And then in mm -hmm. 2000, my body nearly shut down on me. I went into a uh, Baptist uh, hospital with 104 body temperatures. Wow. And uh, my, my, uh, lungs, my right lungs had fill, filled up the fluid so I couldn't breathe. So eventually they had to do, they had to, they had to do an operation on my right lung. So that's when I opened it for me to find some kind of support, but I didn't know where to go. And so in 2008, I just had enough. And so I went to National Cares. And uh, that's where I got all the support and, you know, going to support groups for my addiction and for, you know, showing me how to live with this HIV for the rest of my life. You know, I wanted to learn because I got to deal with it. So I wanted to learn, I wanted to learn about it. So that's what I did. And the main thing that really helped me was um, two things. I took the meds on time and keep the doctor's appointment. That's what's the, the, for me, that was it. That was it. And then yeah. first thing, get off the alcohol and the drugs. That was the first thing I had to do. Because I knew one of them was going to kill me. So I decided in 2008 to do something about it. And I did. And I went to Mexico. I joined the volunteer program. And then um, I became an advocate. And then um, I, um, and my first, uh, I heard about you for you in uh, uh, my first uh, business for uh, AIDS was. That's where Bruce Redman uh, opened up the campaign for you it was you. Mm -hmm. And I was, I shouted so loud that I was hoarse when he got there. But that was like, <laughs> the, thank you. Thank you. Because then, you know, the knowing that you know, by me doing what I was doing, taking my meds and stuff on time, you know, I'm going to live in my life. I'm going to live in something, but this, this virus is not going to be it. Amen. But you can use me help me, and then it gives me a chance to advocate for somebody else. Hey, you can live alone like your business. That is death sentence in the door. So you don't have to have that fear. But it's exactly. that you got to do to keep it up. That's it, Ms. Okay? Margaret. And, and, so, and uh, like I said, you can do it. That's it. I, I love it. That, 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 that was my hope right there. <laughs> I appreciate that. That's like, so, 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 so you're literally, yeah. thank you for sharing that story too. That, that Those are the stories, again, you guys are sharing these stories. These are the stories that, that you have to remember it and share them just as you are with us, with those members of Congress um, tomorrow and throughout the rest of the week and ensure that they that they fill these stories. And so that's big of you. And this is this is a brave space. And I appreciate you for being so brave and sharing those sentiments with us. And um, yeah. it just, it means a lot to me. And I know it means a lot to all everyone that's on the call too. So we have a few more minutes. I'm gonna to try to take these last two who have their hands raised. Um, Troy, you're up next. And then I got LS. So Troy, you wanna go in? Go in. Hey there, um, I am, I was diagnosed in 1988. I am 53 now. I was never diagnosed with an AIDS diagnosis. Um, and I've never, I've never, I've, I've never had a, a sex negative outlook about anyone or anything. Um, but after I was diagnosed, I remember um, feeling like it was always my responsibility to have to control the conversation about HIV. The one thing that you equals you really just internally, immediately after I heard about it, I heard about it, I heard about it, it wasn't you equal you when I first heard about it. Mm -hmm. I heard about it when it was being studied with, heterose with, uh, with heterosexual couples in Africa. And I couldn't wait until they were able to move this along and turn it into something, into what it is now. Um, but long story short, when I first went, when, as e, U equals U evolved internally, emotionally, and sexually, it just gave me a different level of power. Wow. 
that is just um, it, it's not even there's not even words for it. I'm gonna have to figure out what the words are so I can use it tomorrow. <laughs> but it just gave me a, a different level of, of of power to to have a dialogue about intimacy, not just sexual intimacy. Because when you're by yourself and you're positive and and you look at yourself as dirty or the mistake mm. or the positive person, that intimacy with yourself is ruined. And there was no language back then. Even even when you talked about intimacy with the condom era, you know, it still wasn't intimacy. It was a, it would you know, it, it just seems so. It seems so opposite of, of intimacy. <laughs> if I could put that, if, if, if I could find a word for that. Um, so this U equals U just changes a whole dialogue. I mean, it, it sounds like for me, it's almost the beginning of a sex positive dialogue and language. But it just takes you back. It just takes you so close to intimacy. With a, it takes you so much closer to intimacy as an individual who is single. I'm a single male. I've been single. I, I, I'm single off and on. I'm not one of those people that stay in relationships for all the time, so I gotta I gotta have that conversation about being positive, and I have to negotiate that conversation because people don't because the, because the culture has always deemed us responsible for having the conversation because we're the ones that's positive, right. and it's just you know it, it it just feels like it, it feels like it feels like a a a justice something it feels justified mm. in having the responsibility to maintain your health whether you're negative or positive and have that conversation. Correct. It just seems like such justice. And, and that's not the right word, because that the word justice seems like it's judgmental. Right. I'll find that word by tomorrow. <laughs> but, uh, okay. but I wanted to share that because, because, I, because I, I mean, like I said, I've been, in, I've been in and out of relationships, you know, since I was in my 20s. Um, and I've always have felt, I've always felt accountable Right. Until you equals you, like be the one. I had always felt the one, be the one. I always had felt had felt I had to be the one accountable to have to control this dialogue about HIV. And now with this language there, I can actually tell someone who is either negative or positive, or who is who is not um, who is not who. I hate to use the word promiscuous, who's yeah. sex positive okay. about their lifestyle. Yes, yes. yes. You know, um, and let them know, you know, I'm just concerned about your status and not have to make them feel accountable for me being positive or them being positive at the end of the day, you know? Amazing, Troy. That's amazing. Like your your story is, is I'm looking at some of the comments and like, you don't realize, I don't know if you know the impact of your story, but your story and the way that you're telling it is, is, is again, is just, you, I wish that I was a legislator right now that I could like literally this would shape everything that I think about for people living with HIV right. <laughs> and make me want to advocate for more resources because the goal is we want more people to have that same liberating feeling that you have because of you equals you. The only way that some people can do that is if we get them these resources. So I definitely hope that you take your story and you put it into um, a narrative where it, it fits into the policy of briefs for tomorrow and throughout the rest of the week with your policymakers because again, it's going to draw them back to. If we can get more people like me to feel the way that I do about, you know, being HIV positive and, and being undetectable, then we prevent these new transmissions. It's okay to be promiscuous, but it's not it's not right. just solely on people who are living with HIV to to be the ones that bear to burden or have the burden of bearing this conversation. Um, everyone is responsible for their own health and their own sexual health, whether HIV negative or positive. They don't ask who's to make you the person to have to tell that. But with or or miscuous or not promiscuous. You know? Either way, whatever it is. Yeah, either, either way. Maybe. Correct, 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 correct. So thank you for sharing that, Troy. I really appreciate that. Really quickly, we have about maybe like a few seconds. Uh, I have to go to, yeah, to, to LS, LS. Hold on, Miss Mark, I got you. I'm going to give you my email so you can email me. LS, LS, go ahead. I'm so sorry. Go ahead, LS. I'm sorry. Uh, really quickly, uh, there's a lot I could say, but I do want to say this. You equals you is not an age sensitive message. Mm -hmm. Granny and grandbaby needs this. And this is why I say this real fast. Um, I didn't find out until my mom passed away that she was diagnosed with HIV in 2007. Parents were married 27 years. My dad passed 2003. My mom didn't date again until 2007. She entered this relationship and man was doing her wrong, but she stayed with him. And I asked her why she never would tell me. And so um, after my mom passed and I found out everything in, in 2018, I talked to her doctor and her doctor said to me, I told your mom the truth. She could live 10 to 12 years good with HIV if she took care of herself. 
And that's what she did. There was no talk of medication. There was no talk of anything. My mother didn't know anything about undetectable. So here I go contract HIV 2014. And I'm out here talking you equals you and so forth and so on. And then when my mom decided to, excuse me, see about her health, it was too late. So if that doctor had number one, been testing regularly, because, and he said to me, your mom was a deaconess in the church and, 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 and a widow. I didn't believe she was having sex. Granny and grandbaby needs this message because if my mother had gotten this message, I may have a mother here today. Oh. Thank y'all so much. Thank you, Ella. Thank you. And if that doesn't take you out, and I don't know how to follow up with that one, um, that's it for me. That's it. He always has that. He knows it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so sorry, y'all. Ms. Walker, like I said, it gets out the chat. You'll see all of our, our information. I wish that I had more time. Yeah. Feel free to yeah, reach out to us on social media, whatever. We're here to help you guys. Um, just thank you all for being here. And, and, and the link in the chat. Tweet it, share it. Yeah. Share those stories, guys. We appreciate y'all so much. So, so much. See how you is changing lives and bringing so much joy to so many people. Correct. Bye, you all. Miss Marcus, see y'all later. Y'all have a good one. Okay, you too. I just wanted to know if you would you get funded. That's it. That's it. We're trying. We're trying. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thanks, thanks asking. <laughs> okay. All right, dude. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Great job, y'all. Great job. Great job. Thank you, Great job. Guys. Thank you all so much. Bye-bye. Fantastic. Thanks, everybody.